Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Voice in the Wilderness podcast. Today, we got a special guest, man. This guy, um, this is this is honestly one of the guys that I would consider to be a brother from another mother, but the same daddy, um, Jerry Coker from Branford, Florida. He is here with us today, and man, we go back just a little bit. What? <laughs> When I don't you what what year did you graduate? Eighty six. So eighty six. So I came in. If I remember correctly, I went to spring practice when you were a senior. I, yep. I wound up playing um, on the JV, I think. But mm-hmm. I think you were there because um, I was thinking about that last mm-hmm. night because I I remember Alonzo Timmons. And I remember uh, Gator David, and that was your senior cl- class, yep. wasn't it? That's it. And I was playing middle linebacker, and <laughs> uh, y'all ran a sweep. It was we were at Memorial during the little mm-hmm. spring jamboree game, and I remember the sweep was to the left, and I had just come up from the ninth grade. I I didn't have any clue about a crackback, <laughs> but those of you that aren't football people, a crackback is when a wide receiver that's lined up on the outside of the formation comes back and blocks on the inside on a sweep. The sweep's going kind of behind him, and he's coming back in, and he's cracked back in on the linebacker. And Alonzo came in, man, and hit me. I didn't see him. I had no clue they even blocked like that. They didn't do that in junior high school. And when he hit me, man, he hit me. I'm talking (laughs) – when you go back and watch the film, you can actually see the bottom of my cleats (laughs) on film. He hit me so hard, and – and I remember I got up and I said, "That will never happen again. I will never have anybody hit me like that again." Yeah. And uh, but he was he was tough, man. But me and you go so far back. I mean, we God, we do, don't we? It's amazing when you think about the history. And this is the thing, Jerry, that's been hitting me this year. I'm 49, and I'm sitting here thinking about the fact that I'm I'm well I'm I'm beyond halfway. Sure, sure. And so I've been just sitting here, uh, kind of trying to reel that in, and then when I have a friend like you come on the podcast, I just think to myself, man, where is the time? Where's the time gone, man? Yeah, I know. It, it, it really has flown by. But you, if you sit back and think, and yeah, you have a tendency to think about the good times, bad times, you know, throughout life, especially when you're getting older in age. And, and, and man, is there anything that you and I have not done together? Oh, I, trust oh, me. A lot, of, a lot of the crazy oh, wow. stories I share with people, I, oh, oh, yeah. you're and involved obviously, in. Obviously, there's a lot of things, obviously, that we don't want to discuss. But there, there's a lot of – man, we've had some good times. We've had some really good times, experienced some great things. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking about – I was thinking about the uh, – <laughs> I love to tell the story about the time when uh, – there's so many. I don't, I don't even I, know. I know, I, I, I know. There's so yeah. many, but I, I, I think about – you know, I think I was telling Ronnie Frazier went to a football game with me Friday night, and mm-hmm. I was telling him, I said, "Well, me and Jerry used to go to Texas and hunt." I said, "We went together. We went out and sat together. We didn't <laughs> even sit separately because we just sit yeah. there and talk." <laughs> yeah, we would just walk the mountains together and just hunt and talk. And I, I remember that it was kind of unorthodox. Now, Everybody now, else is going to stands and uh, stuff. Me and you just we're traversing the terrain. But I want tell tell the story about that that mule deer that we shot that day. Cause I tell that story to people a lot, man. Do you remember when we set up on? Silent yeah, you were Mountain? you were blown away by that for yeah. some reason. You you were just blown away, and I don't know why did you not participate in that? Why didn't you shoot the deer? Well, I was going I was because I was there. I remember. I was like, we need to shoot that deer. You need to shoot that deer, and you didn't do it. Well, the the thing that was so cool about that to me was how we just sat there and we just sat on the side of that hill. And we watched all these deer come into that little. It looked like a bowl. Almost yeah, it, it was a ravine. Yeah, yeah. we were at kind of at the top of the mountain when we started, actually, and it was looking down in that bottom. It was a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, uh, and back then, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was in pretty decent shape. That was a few years back, but I remember that deer sitting on the side of that hill, and I was like, I, I'm not, I'm not dragging this deer out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and sure. uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody clean a, clean an animal on the ground. And um, I love the show alone. I don't know if you watch alone. I do. I do. Did you see the one yeah. this year? I did. Where he killed the the uh, the muskox. Yes. That guy. I'm he telling can do you, it, can he? Oh, he, he was, can do it. He was amazing, wasn't he? You know, you're going to be amazed at the <clears throat> things you do. You can do when your stomach starts growling a little bit, though. I think they were motivated a little differently <laughs> than you and I were that day. Yeah, he was eating everything on that animal. <laughs> everything. He, saved it all. He didn't leave anything. Mm-hmm. Anything. I remember uh, watching that. I don't know if you guys watch alone, but it's a it's a TV show where they give 10 survival items, and you can't take a firearm, but you can take a bow, and they send them out to the Arctic, I think is where they were at, 
and they got to stay there for a hundred days, and they win like a million bucks or something. And this one guy, man, that won it the last set, the last season, man, he that guy he shot a, a, a muskox with his bow, and it didn't quite kill it. So he started running up there and stabbing it with a knife. And I thought he must be related to Jerry Coker. <laughs> He was motivated. He was motivated. He was not about to let that meal get away from him. No, and he and he took advantage of it. Do you remember? Did you see the the way that he built that little that little wooden box to put the meat in to put all the meat in? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean because these guys go out there and they build these platforms, and I'm like, that ain't gonna work, man. I mean, there's sure. there's stuff out there that don't have any trouble getting up a platform. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they were even hanging it from ropes, and they were still getting to it. Yep. I mean, you know, and I don't know. It was kind of crazy. So tell me, man. Um, I got. I know that you got one playing football right now. He's a sophomore this year, Caden, mm-hmm. and you've been helping out coach over in Branford, and, and that's one of the schools that I call on with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And so, um, this is the first time you've been kind of really back involved in football. Um, yeah. In a while, so you kind of jumped back in when Caden got interested in it. I did. And I did. I never pushed football. Football was a huge, huge influence in my life when I was young, obviously. I, I mean, I just uh, – I, I was blessed with a great uh, parents' support, you, you know, and everything I did in life. But uh, I sit back as I'm older and I look and I think of all the things that I've learned through football that has helped me to be successful in life. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. because you – You've got to get people skills, and, and you've got to learn discipline, and, and you have to learn how to follow directions. And, and there's just so many. We could go on and on and on about the skills that comes with the game of football. And, and that's why I tell a lot of people that the game of football is great, but there's a lot more to football than just a scoreboard. There, there, there really is. It's, it's really unbelievable. Um, and, and I tell the kids, you don't have to go to college to be successful in football. You know, we, we got lots of kids that are um, probably lack a lot in athleticism. Um, maybe they're just not putting everything into it, but they're still there and they're learning. You, you know, and I see a lot of the kids that come through that really aren't into football so much. They're more in search of a uh, father figure. They want to be part of something and they, and they want someone to show them a little bit of attention. And, and a lot of the boys, you know, you see they don't have a dad at home. You know, it's a split married home, stuff like that. And um, so football's huge. Football is huge. Um, obviously, you know, I, I took a bunch of uh, injuries and got banged up and, and all this. So as my child was coming up, I, I never pushed football on him at all. We never discussed it. We, we really didn't. You know, and everyone would come to me and they go, oh, I know football was big with you. I, I guess she's going to be a football player when he grows up. I don't know. That, that's that's going to be, you know, his choice. You know, it is, it's tough on the body sometimes if you're – really aggressive you know in the game it, it can be tough on the body but um he did when he was little he popped up and he goes hey i i think i want to play football and of course you know you know how it's like man you go you get behind the scenes you're going <laughs> yes yes this is exactly what i wanted you know but you, and i never tried to push it on him at all but i just told him that you know if you're going to go if you're going in you're going all in you know, that's it. We're not just going to part-time this or just goof off to hang out with your buddies. I mean, if we're going to go in, let's go all in and, and, and do everything you do uh, full speed, you know. So, he has, and, and he's, done, he's done well. He's done well. Well, I'll tell you, man, you know, I'm going to give you some statistics that, that you know, we I'm working with these kids all the time, so I hear these kind of statistics. Um, ninety Over 90% of the young men that are in prison – or they come from homes without fathers. Yeah. Over 90%. Now, if you want to take that up to a, a, a more, you know, what I would consider to be staggering statistic, 95% of black males in prison come from a home without a father. Oh, yeah. I so can it's, even, it. it's even more, more dangerous for them. And then, <clears throat> now here's the opposite flip side of that. 98% of the time when a father comes to Christ, first – Ninety-eight percent of the time, his family, all his entire family will follow suit. Yes, in that kind of, I mean, uh, to me, it's a uh, it's a picture of the need we have for sure. that father figure in our life. And a lot of people, there's a question in some of these study guides that I do, and it says, uh, "How does your relationship with your earthly father affect your relationship with your heavenly father?" And man, to me, you know, my dad died at two, 
I didn't really have that figure at all sure. in my life. And my coaches, man, they were they were, you know, they weren't necessarily godly men, but they were good men, and they were, That's right. and, and and they they cared about me, and that, mm-hmm. I kind of looked up to them. I remember, um, you know, I I was very highly motivated to satisfy my coaches, almost as if they were my dad. You know, what well, I'm that that was what I was going to ask you. You know, if you think back when you were young and you started football, let, let's just get out of the basics. Why did you play football? What was it because you liked the pain? No, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, what was it because you liked to run until you were ready to throw up? No, no. Uh, it, it was because you, you you needed to be a part of something and and you needed that father figure in, in your life. Some I, I was blessed and I didn't have to. I, I was a little, I, I guess, narrow minded. I enjoyed the pain, you know, somewhat. <laughs> but there, there's a ton of kids that really and truly, and, and, and I've been coaching now for years, so I, I get to see a lot of the kids and. I guess that's – man, I'm not a football coach. I'm really not. As far as getting into the technical aspect of the game, I'm not the guy. You know, as far as camping out, you know, and watching film for 10 hours, I, I'm not the guy. Um, I, I would say that I kind of know my, my players' limits, what they can and cannot do and whether they're going to perform. But most of that comes from the fact that I spend a lot of time around my kids and I talk to them, not just about football. You know what I'm saying? I try to get to know them. And then I have kids come through that are um, not athletic at all. Right. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I believe everyone has skills somewhere, somehow, that they have skills. But all the skills don't always match up. So what I'm getting at is there's a lot of kids that come out for football that are not football players. Never will be. You know. And I've sat down with some of them and I'll go, why do you come out here and every day you're, you're, you're running and you can't keep up? And you're slower than other kids. Why, why do you, why you always come here for that? And and I've had the kids tell me, uh, Coach, because I like you guys. I like being part of y'all. Yeah. And that's all it is, man. They're looking for a father figure. So if you take a, it goes right back. If you take a child that's looking for a father figure, that's what they look for. What does even a man look for? Yeah. Us men still look at a father figure. Right. Uh, you know. Everybody says I, I've been blessed throughout my whole life, man. I can't sit here and. Uh, tell you that you know I had to walk through the snow seven miles uphill both way to school and we were starving and eating dirt no no, no. I, I was blessed my whole life has been blessed um, but I have strived pretty hard to be as successful as I can but when it gets right down to it man they're never in life nobody can go through life without needing something yeah you have to have a support system that's what you have to do you know and these kids something's tough at home and they'll come to you and they'll say hey, coach man, I got a hard time. Uh, my mom left or whatever, you know, my dad left and we don't have a car now. And I don't know if I can make it to practice. And you, you, you hear all this stuff, you know, when you try to, we'll, we'll take care of it. But even as a coach, man, we all, and you yourself, man, I've, we've been friends for so long. I, I've seen Skipper struggle. Oh yeah. And, and, I, and there's no doubt. I, I'm sure Skipper's seen me struggle, you know, and man, you got to have somewhere to look to. A lot of people don't understand that. And I have a lot of these kids that say, coach, what, how do you deal with that? There's ways. There's yeah. ways. You got to get your strength. Got to yeah. get your strength. I had that conversation with Gracie this year, my 18 year old daughter. Mm-hmm. She, um, you know, we got in the truck and we were riding around, and she said, "She said I'm just so scared. I'm graduating. I'm just scared." And she goes, "I don't, I don't know what the future holds for me." And I said, "Baby, God's got a plan for your life. I mean, He created you for a purpose." And and she's like, How? "She goes, you you just live that life so effortlessly." And I said, mm-hmm. "Well, you know." Once you live in it for a little while and you just trust him with it and he shows up like he promises he will, I said it gets a little easier. And she, you know, she's in that season right now where she's trying to figure that out because she's going to college. Sure. And, excuse me, and she's trying to navigate her way through that. But I love the, I love the relationship between the coach and the player. I love that, man. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Absolutely. um, I think one of the coolest things that, that like there's a show we watched last night called Safety. It just came out on Disney, and it's about it's a true story about a player that got a full scholarship to Clemson when when uh, when one of the Bowden sons were coaching at Clemson. I can't remember which one it was, and his mother was a drug addict. She kept having to go into rehab, and he actually brings him to campus and sneaks him on his campus and has him in his dorm living with him, his little brother. <laughs> And it's just a great story. I mean, and I was sitting there watching it last night, and I'm thinking, and the thing that he says in that movie that kind of stood out is he gets in front of the NCAA, and he looks at him, and he says, I've always tried to do everything on my own. 
He said, but for the first time in my life, he said, I've got a family. And his whole team, coaches and everybody are at the mm -hmm. hearing. And he says, for the first time in my life, I've got a family that's here to help me. And I'm asking you if they could help me help my brother. And I was just like, there's just nothing like oh, yeah. being a part of a football team and having that sure. having that and that incredible work ethic to do all that you can to be the best that you can be and to be able to pour all your passion into something with a bunch of guys that you love and you've grown up with. That's why I love high school football the best. I mean, you know, my wife, because she, when she's watching the Gators, she's a Gator fan, and, she, and I'll say, I say, y'all are doing good. And she says, why do you always say y'all? And I'm like, I don't really attach myself to a college. I just don't. Um, I've been to college. I went to play football in college, and it was very business. Yeah. It, it was a business. I didn't like that. I mean, I, I expected it to be more like high school. And, I, you know, I kind of decided after I left college as, a, as an athlete, I was like, high school is where it's at because those kids that aren't oh, yeah. great athletes get to participate. And sure. those guys that grew up together and have known each other their whole life, they get to go out and have a common goal and a common dream, and they get to fight together for it. Sure. And it teaches you so much about life. I mean – Oh, I, it does. I know me and you've talked a lot about, um, you know, that for some reason something crazy happened in our country. Me and you kind of made it – we're going to get together. Me and you are going to hook up to survive sure. and make it. And mm -hmm. see, that's the kind of stuff where, um, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know, if you want, if you want to have great people in your life, you got to be willing to be a great person. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Because you are what you associate yourself with, and that's vice versa for the people. You have to be a good person yourself. Right. And I, and I I tell, you know, when I talk to young people about marriage, I'm like, when you're standing there and you're looking down the aisle at your, at your, at your future husband, what do you want to see down there? What kind of man do you want to see down there? And I said, well, guess what? When he looks back down at you, he wants to see a the special same. kind of woman. That's right. And, you know, we've got to – I tell people all the time, man, you can't fix nobody else. So you got to try to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of trying to find the right person, try to become the right person. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So with me and you, man, we go we go so far back. And I think about some of the things that we've we've done in life. But one of the funniest stories you've ever told me <laughs> was when you were coaching Caden in Little League. <laughs> and, and the opposing coaching staff was cussing the players as they would be on their sideline and stuff. Do you remember that story? I do. I do. <laughs> I try not to mention that. I really wish you hadn't brought that up right now. Um, <laughs> my blood pressure is already going up. Um, that was that was that was the most testing. Um, th th God God put a test on me that day. I mean, I'll just tell you that's just the truthful uh, truth to it. Um, man, I, I I dearly love those kids, and and anybody who's coached knows what I'm talking about. Um, I have children of my own, and, and they're everything to me. Um, but those players are everything to me also. You know, I, I love those kids. So kind of what that means, man, don't mess with my kids. It's just that way. And, man, I'm old school. You, you, you know me. I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I don't generally like to discuss and talk things out if we have a problem. Right. I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, if I, just because I say I, I, I would lay hands on him, that could not always be good, I can tell you. Yeah. I, I, I'm that guy. I, I am. I, I'm, I'm just old school, you know. And um, that that game was uh, the biggest test ever for me. Man, they're, they're little kids. I mean, they're, they're uh, eight to ten year old, and um, I had no clue. And it, it was a big rival game. And I had I had kids on the sideline that, that, were, that were crying, which that would happen from time to time, but I'm like, what's what's up? What's wrong with you? And the coach on the other side's cussing at us. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. He's, he's not. They're not doing that. You, you know, because when when you're on that level, man, most of these coaches are screened. You know, you got to oh, be yeah. somebody reasonable. You just don't let anybody in there coach kids. And I said, no, that's not the case. And I go to ask some other kids. They're telling me the same thing. And there's no, he's hollering and screaming. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I, I let some other coach. I said, you you deal with everything. I'm watching for a minute. And I went to watching and. Oh my gosh! But I, I can't hear everything, you know, that's going on. Yeah. But I see the coach when we were next to their sidelines. He's up there bobbing his head and screaming, and you know, and obviously he is using foul language at my at my kids. Oh wow! Oh, I almost lost my composure <laughs> it, once I realized that it's the truth. So I seen the referee right there, and I say, "Hey, buddy, stop! We got we got to regroup here. This isn't going on." This yeah. isn't going to go on any further. 
And then I just, I said, just forget it. I'll stop it. Watch this. And I, <laughs> it, it was, it was horrible. It was a typical horrible um, thing you see on little league football. Kind of, you know, you go to YouTube and you <laughs> see a upset parent and they're screaming because their child didn't get to play. And it, it was, I, I didn't get too carried away with it, but I did walk on the field and I, I expressed my um, viewpoints on it. And, and he obviously expressed his back very untastefully. <laughs> um, so it, it was a, it was a extremely difficult thing for me to try to set an example. It, yeah. That's probably what I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind. I knew what I was going to do. I, right. I'll break. They, I will break him of that yeah. now. You know, but I'm like, as I'm going, you know, I'm like, man, there's kids. There's kids here. Right. There's yeah. parents here. I can't. I can't do this. Right. I can't do it. And I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I maintained my composure the best that I could. But uh, it was a it was a challenging situation, man. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It's, that by normally, I, I would not have ever had the strength to have dealt with that. You know, not it's the cool. the way that I did. Uh, what's so cool about what I'm doing with FCA is uh, I get to work with all these different coaches. And, man, I love – I'm talking about I love the guys that I'm, co- I'm I'm working with right now. Tim Clark at Bramford you, sure. you coach with. I love that guy, man. And he's such a great guy. And then you got Coach Thomas over in Union County. Another just absolutely amazing head coach, and then you got Coach Mitchell over in and and uh, Hamilton County first year. He graduated there, man. He's passionate mm-hmm. about that program. You got Kyler Hall, that's a graduate of Swanee High. He's over there, man. And then um, I got Coach Allen here in Columbia. He's a graduate of Columbia. So you've got all these coaches that have embraced the godly role of being a head coach, yep. and. I also have a coach that I'm really close to that's up in Brooks County, which is in Quitman. And uh, he's actually playing for the state championship next week. And I went to his last two games, and I went into the locker room with him. And, man, he is I'm, – I'm telling you, Jerry, my wife picks at me because every time I go in his locker room and uh-huh. I watch him do pregame, I, I get emotional. Every time, man. Really? Every time. He, he, he's got this crazy story to where they built a brand-new high school – and then they had their old high school. Uh, it's down the road a few miles, and so they would work out at the new school, and they would go and practice at the old facility. And he would let his seniors drive their vehicles, and he would let the underclassmen ride a bus, and they'd go over there when they would transition for their workout. Mm-hmm. And these four seniors hop into a Tahoe and take off down this road, man, and go to racing somebody and wind up in a wreck. Oh, wow. And the first thing that pulls up on the wreck is his bus. Oh, my gracious. And he gets out, and three of his players have, have passed away in this wreck. Oh, my gracious. And he's the first one to walk up. All three starters, all of them were going to be on his defense. And so, he and, – and he's had to deal with this. This happened about, I think, about eight or nine years ago. But he, he, their slogan is, we bring the hammer. And so, he carries these three sledgehammers around with him in the locker room, and he puts them in the center of the locker room. And when he has all the kids come up and they take a knee and they all come up together around him and he takes that sledgehammer and he pounds it on the concrete three times. And then he does this. And, man, it's just so powerful, man, to listen to That is. That is. And just to watch that and to watch how – and see, he's old school like me and you are. I mean, he's like Mm – a lot of coaches look at me and you and the way we coach and they're like, nah, man, y'all don't do it the right way. You're not – you know, you don't relate to this younger generation. Let me tell you something. He does it just like we do it. And the man's playing for a second state championship in two years. There you go. And he's all about discipline. It's all about structure. It's all about integrity. It's all about honor. It's all about God. Sure. He is doing a phenomenal job. And so I know when Coach Clark, Coach Clark brought you back out to help coach, I know that he comes from a newer era because he's only, what, 20? He's, he's still in his 20s, isn't he? I couldn't even. I think he's in his 30s, early 30s. Is he? Mm-hmm. I didn't think – he looks like he's about 21. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he ain't aging yeah. a lick, is he? Uh-huh. But um, I know he's still young and he comes from – and he played at Florida. I know that mm-hmm. he comes from a different era than me and you do. Sure. And and so I see him embracing the way that me and you came through football. And he's he, – and, and I'm going to tell you something. Y'all's program, when you watch film, he's, he's giving me the pleasure of being able to watch film. Mm-hmm. You guys have come light years – Oh yeah, there's in, no doubt. In the last three or four years, there's no doubt. And so, um, so tell me a little bit about what you expect next year for y'all. We we got a lot of good athletes coming back. Um, any any time when, when Tim took over, uh, 
we were having – it's, it's just a tiny town. Tiny town. Uh, football's never been really, really big. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it is somewhat, but um, it's, it's not a huge football town, if, if you know what I'm saying. So when, when, when Tim took over, um, we, we were a struggling football team. And I, I wasn't there either. You know, I, I was um, helping on some town league stuff. and um, So we weren't there. And then it, I got asked to come up, you know, and – like, wow, okay, I, I guess I will because my son was coming up. And I, and I do not coach my child. It's just a crazy rule, but all the daddy coaches, and that's a rule I have. I don't coach my child. I don't either. Uh, I just don't. I tell the coaches, you know, be hard on him. I, I expect you to – if you don't get on to him, if he does wrong, I'm going to be mad. So, you know, I don't coach my child. But the, the system has worked, and I've come up, and I kind of got there about the same time that Tim did. And Tim had uh, some huge, huge shoes to fill. Man, he did. Uh, but – I don't think I've ever seen anyone as passionate about the game of football as, as what he is. He, he is young and um, energetic about winning football games. Um, he brings a lot of the new stuff in that it works. It, you know, it really does work. New techniques, new new things. Um, he, he's, he's, he lives it. There's no amount of pay that could pay him for the amount of time that he invests into the game of football. But ever since he's taking, taking the position, he, he's steadily climbed the ladder. Next year was a little better. The right. following year was a little bit better. And the following year was a little bit better. Um, blatantly better. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're jumping by leaps and bounds as of what we're what we're doing or what he's doing. Um, but there, there's going to come a time, you know, you know, how much further, how much faster can you continue to climb? You know, he's jumping with leaps and bounds. Um, he had a lot of phenomenal athletes this year. Uh, we, we lost a lot of seniors, a lot of seniors. But – Man, we're stacked with some young kids that's got a lot of talent. Um, you know, after this year here, next year may be a little bit more of a struggle than, than this uh, uh, this year here. But we still got some good athletes, and uh, he's still implementing his procedures. You, you know, some watch. You got to buy in. You got to buy into the program. He preaches that to them all the time. Hey, man, you, you got to buy in and believe. And, and that's it. You, you got to buy into it, and you got to believe it with your heart that what we're doing is the right thing, and it's going to work. And well, it has. Well, I'll tell you, I loved when I went to y'all's game this year, uh, early on in the season, man. Caden, your boy, he's kicking. <laughs> and he's left-footed. He's left-footed, which is cool. And because Fisher's left-handed, my son. And I seen him kick the ball off a couple times, man. And he actually goes down there and makes the tackle. So, I ain't never seen a kicker do that. <laughs> yeah, he, he's – um. But we had to discuss that. Yeah. You know, because normally your kicker's going to hang back. Right. You, you know. And, he ain't hanging nowhere. And they go, okay, you're going to kick the ball. That's what, you know, you're going to hang back. And coaches are going, you're going to have to hang back. You know, I said, that's not going to work with yeah. him, guys. You know, y'all are going to have to. <laughs> you're going to send him. Safety. He's already got a running start, man. Send him. But yeah. I just, he, he loves the pain, you know. So, yeah, he, he, he loves that, uh, the rough part of it, which is the part that, you know, I kind of wish. I wish he'd pursue the kicking aspect of it a little bit. His body will last a lot longer. Yeah, but, it will. but that's not what he likes. Well, not I know you was likes. a long snapper. You know, I did, and uh, that's kind of what got you into college, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and that's a good gig to have too, man. It's a great gig to have, yeah. but I, I do know where he comes from. It, yeah. You know, it, it come down to it, and they said, "Well, this is all you're going to do," and I went, "No." <laughs> I didn't come here to snap the long ball, just snap that. We're going to play some ball. Right. I'm here to play football, you right. know. So we had some discussions with uh, Coach Gavin and them back then in college that we had to get this worked out. I'll snap the ball for you, but we're going to play football too. I'm right. not just going to snap the ball. Well, anyway, we did. It worked out. Another thing that Caden's really ticking after you in is uh, the hunting thing, you know. Yeah. And, and, you you know, he's blessed because you've, you've been so, you know, you guys had a hunting preserve one time and – um and you guys actually sold that, but you still have plenty of land and you still do a lot of hunting. And he's kind of just taking that thing and, and, and just from what you was telling me, kind of taking it to another level. <laughs> he has. He, he is. Um, I hope it's a fad, but he has become obsessed with it. He, he's just an outdoorsman. Uh, not so much a killer, you know, but he's just an outdoors kind of kid, man. He, he loves to uh, – he loves to spend time in the woods. You know, I see his friends call and say, hey, we're going to the movies or we're going out to eat or no. I don't mean, I'm going hunting in the morning. That just, it's kind of him. It's his, uh, it's his thing. He loves the outdoors, which is great. I've, I've always, I've always worried, you know, that my children, um, I, I'd always hope that I could keep them off of the streets and out of trouble. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I was always that way. And 
like, man, I think back of when I was younger and some of the foolish things that I did when I was younger. And I'm like, man, I hope I can keep him out of that environment, you know? Um, and I have, but it's to the extreme now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the, I love the fact that he loves to hunt and, and, and he's taking after you because that's, that's just a family passion you guys have had ever since I've known you. And, and to see him kind of embrace it, man, that's to me as a father and you got yeah. a son, it's always good to see them kind of, you know, have the same passions that you sure, do. Sure. Well, you know, the, the hunting, hunting is, um, yeah, obviously lots of people, you know, disapprove of it and, and I got it. And, and there's a lot of hunting techniques that I probably disapprove of also, you know, so we all have our morals that we have to go by, but hunting to me is, is kind of like the football. Uh, there's a lot more to hunting than, um, just shooting an animal right. or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that's uh, never waited in a cypress duck pond before daylight and sit there and listen to the birds come alive and the sun start cracking over, you know, to shoot birds, man, if you haven't experienced that, I, I, I just, I don't know. Outdoors isn't for you, you know? So same thing sitting in a tree stand, you know, sitting in a tree stand and watching that sun come up and the birds start chirping and, uh, yeah, Man, there's nothing out there like that. There just nothing is. Everything here is God's creations, and what a phenomenal job he has done. I mean, this oh, yeah. is just unbelievable. Why would anybody not want to come out here and, you know, and enjoy this? Uh, so, yeah, it, it's it's all part of a, a big, huge picture. It's not just about killing animals and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's a lot more to it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very spiritual time for me to get away and get my free time and uh, just kind of get my mind right. You know, I talk to the kids all the time about this. You got to get your mind right. Yeah. First thing, you want to play football and be good at it. Get your mind right. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's kind of what it is. So. Well, I I tell you, man, I I just got access to a piece of property up on the river that is way up there, just just south of the Florida Georgia border on the Swanee, mm -hmm. and I just got access to it. Went up there Saturday morning and uh, just was sitting, and I could see the river to my right, and the yeah, every, it had a little food plot to my left, and. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just, you know, as, as I'm watching the sun break and I'm watching the steam come off the side of the river and I'm just hearing the world come alive. And I was just thinking to myself, I don't know how anybody in the world that sees all this around you and, and doesn't clearly see the hand of God in creation. Yeah. You know, it says in Romans that creation, that there's no way you can, you know, God is visible in his creation. And I think about that, and here's one of the things I love to share with the young kids when I go out into the woods with them and go hunting or fishing or what have you. I tell them, I say, everything that you look at, anything that you anything that you put your eye on right now, show me an exact duplicate of it. Mm -hmm. Anything. I don't care what you pick up. Yep. It doesn't matter what it is you pick up. Show me a duplicate of it. Sure. And they can't. And yeah. this is the coolest thing about that. The, 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 the evidence of eternity is in everything that we look at. Mm -hmm. There is no limit to anything that you look at. And when you start thinking about, I tell people, you know, you could take uh, and just put an inch of, of snow on the top of this cup right here. And there's not one of those snowflakes alike, but we probably couldn't even count them. Sure. Sure. Just on the top of this impossible. cup. Mm -hmm. And there's literally hundreds of thousands of miles of mountain ranges that are covered with snowflakes that are all completely unique. And they're all different. They're all different. It just blows my. I can't even wrap my mind around creation. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it it is. It is a. Uh, uh, and then the funny thing about it is, it's like those mornings or those evenings when you when you're sitting there and you start. I kind of call it dissecting it when you look at the birds and the leaves and the rainfall or the dew falling off the bushes. You're like, this is huge, <laughs> man. This is just huge. Um, you, you know, and you go, wow. And, and you can look at a picture in a magazine. But there's just nothing like it until you feel it. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? How can you look at something and see it and feel it? Oh, you can. You can. There's just a way about it that you, you feel it and you know, you know? Well, so, I, yeah. I can tell you, I think about some of the times me and you've been hunting. And like I said, me and you like to sit together. I don't, You remember when we were in Texas and we, we were sitting up on top of that power line looking down at the Pecos River. And we kept seeing all these deer running around in these, uh, like, sage grass and stuff. Mm -hmm. And me and you had decided, tonight, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go down there and we're going to sit in that grass <laughs> where they're coming out. Do you remember that? They were all around us. We couldn't Everywhere. see them. But they were, like, right within a few feet of us. Right there close. And we couldn't see them because it got dark. We waited. Yeah. But I was just thinking, you know, I love that. And then when you took me out there and um, I almost got attacked by the javelina. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell the I'll tell that story real quick. So we're bow hunting in Texas. Yeah, and we have not discussed javelina. I remember yeah, that. You never told me about javelina. You, you went. Uh, I said, "What'd you do any good?" And you went, "Yeah." I said, "What'd you get?" And he goes, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What do you mean you don't know?" <laughs> so I was sitting there in this flimsy little white. I don't know if y'all have ever seen those white plastic chairs that you stack. You know, you put in your yard. I'm in mean, one of them behind a bush, a, a little cedar bush. And listen, there's no trees in Texas. You can't climb anything. <laughs> it's all bushes. And so I'm sitting there. And we're bow hunting, and all I got is my bow and a knife. That's it. And I see this little javelina come in, and I'm like, what in the world is that thing? <laughs> you know? And so you, I, I figured, well, the deer won't come in because this little thing's in here, man. So I just stood up, and I threw a rock at him. And when he saw me, it was on. He came straight to me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I drew back on him, and I shot him. And then as soon as I shot him, another one comes out of the bushes after me. <laughs> <laughs> so I shot it. And I'm sitting there the whole time going, what in the world is this thing, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what it was. I was like, what in the world, man? And so, I, I mean, they are aggressive, man. Them little boogers are aggressive. Oh, they can be, and they're fast. They're, they're, they're Lightning something else. Lightning fast. They man. are something else. But it, what they weigh maybe 40, 50 uh, yeah, pounds? Yeah, something. A big one would be that, yeah. Yeah, they're not real big, but, man, they're aggressive. And then – I remember sitting there, but anyway, I, I just remember a couple of those times when we were out there. We had some great times up there, man, that javelina and them sitting in that sage grass and then on that yep. mountain. And I'm going I'm to tell that story the way I remember it. You tell me if I'm right, because I know people that are watching are like, you never told the story about being in the little uh, ravine. Uh-huh. So we're sitting up on this mountain. We kind of walked from the camp and we kind of walked over a couple of hills. It's not really mountains out there. It's kind of more like between a mountain and a hill. And so we're up on the top of this hill, and we're watching these deer walk down in this little bowl. And there was a creek bed, an old dried-up creek bed that was kind of coming through there when the rain would come down off the mountains, it would go through there. And I told Jerry when we got kind of a little later in the morning, I said, man, I'm going to get – I said, you walk up on that ridge, and I'll get down in that creek bed, and we'll see if we can jump something out of that little creek bed. And so I'm walking down in that creek bed, and you said, there he is, there he is. (laughs) And you took a shot, and I look up to my right, and I saw the deer just fall right when you hit it. It just hit the ground. And I was thinking, man, that's a long shot. I don't know how far it was, but what do you think? That you say? was a long way, so I don't know, but it was a long way. It ways. had to be a couple hundred yards, man. It was. Yeah, I remember because he was the whole time you were going, I can't believe you did that. I mean, you shot I can't believe like, you did that. I mean, it was like, I was, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. There's some kind of gene in you and your family when it comes to long shooting that the rest, y'all should have been snipers. I, <laughs> I've never, I mean, because remember John shot the deer across the interstate? Yeah, that was pretty wild. People don't still don't believe that story. That was a pretty wild story. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. Yeah. But you shot that mule deer, and it fell right where it was at. I'm on top of the side of the mountain, and we went up there and got it. It was a nice buck. I don't remember yeah, how big was. was that. I think he was a nine point or something. But yeah, he was, he a, was nice nice. Deer. He yeah, was he a nice deer. He was a nice deer. And then we went and picked John up, and his that's Jerry's brother John. And John says, "I got one because I ten went through the property." It did. But, but, but what y'all got to understand, it wasn't like it is in Florida. When when we say that, they had to cut the through yeah, the mountains. Cut, they cut I-10 through the mountain. Right. So you got a mountain top on the right and a mountain top on the left, and I-10 goes through it. It's very unique there. And John was on top of the mountain. So he was not just, you know, because it's a pretty, what would you say, 300 yards? Uh, at least that, man. That's a long ways because yeah. that's a right-of-way that they pushed all the way, that they cut all the way through that mountain. So it's a long ways. It's yeah. A, it's the three to four hundred yards all day long. Yeah, and John says, "I got one on the other side of the interstate." Yeah. We're just like, "You got one on the other side of the interstate." Yeah, we're <laughs> like, thinking, "How did you get there?" Yeah, I'm like, yeah. And so we drive around there, and he clipped its spine. And yeah. I remember John looking at me, going, "Now that's how you keep the meat fresh." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember oh, that man. Boy. We had some good times out there on that old that land. We that did, year, man. We did. We had some good. Do you remember there. when we when we drove the truck on the and we dropped the corn? on the road and we came the next morning and we turned on that road and there was just like was tons deer of, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I, I mean, all these yellow eyes in the dark, it was crazy. But, um, I don't know. We had a great time out there, man. It was, we did. A, it was, it was a great time, man. But anyway, so man, I just want to tell you, you know, I love you, brother. I want you to hear that from my man, heart. Man. I tell you, I appreciate everything. I love you too, man. I appreciate I mean, everything that you guys do. I really, I do. mean, I, I could tell you this, Jerry, you are, you know, people tell you if you can count your best friends, if you if you can, you know, if you got five in your life, you know, you've, you've really got a great friendship. Yep. 
And I'm gonna tell you, you're one of my five, brother. You, you're, well, I appreciate that, and, you and you're 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 one of them too. I've always said, you know, especially these kids, if you're having fun and you're putting on the fun, you're gonna have lots of friends. Yeah, you really want to test your friends, hit rock bottom, yep. and see who's standing around you. Then yep. those are your true friends. Those are the ones that are really hard to come by. As long as you're on top of the world and you're having fun, lots of people claim to be your friend. But when you hit rock bottom and you have nothing to offer to them other than friendship. Those standing there are your true ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm sitting here looking at you, and I, I, I see that me and you both are just getting so white. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. People call that wisdom. I don't know that I would because it's something internally has fallen apart, too, because I crack <laughs> and pop and ache and hurt. Yeah, and, and, I, and I've got a, I got a 15-year-old at home that goes, Dad, I think I could take you. Yeah. Just keep thinking it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just keep well, thinking. you know, Fisher's ten, and he's he's. Uh, I was telling Ronnie, we'll be driving down the road now, and he'll, you know, he'll elbow me or poke me, or he's always testing me, always trying me, and I'm like, I told Ronnie, I said, man, I said, I, I, I bet by the time he's thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years old, I'm in, I'm gonna be in trouble because Fisher's sure. spo- he's supposed to be six foot four. Golly, if he if he winds up being that tall and the thick as he, you know, it's it's gonna, you know, so. You may don't end be up trying having, your daddy fisher. I'm telling you now. You may end up having to relinquish the crown early. Yeah, I'm, I, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something because I can tell you, he he come up behind me after church was over yesterday and put me in a chokehold, and I couldn't hardly get his arm off of me, and uh, he's only ten, so I, I got my I got my work cut out for me. But um, you know, I'm like you, man. Things are starting to fall apart. All it you, is. All you young guys out there, man, enjoy being young because it don't last. That's forever. exactly right. It does not last forever. When you're out there coaching and you look at the guys running around, I know for me it's like, man, golly, I can't believe I used to do that. Well, I'll be honest with you, man. I get kind of crazy every once in a while. And, and up until the last year or so, I would uh, I would actually run some sprints with the boys. You know, I would. They'd think, oh, you're old and fat and can't do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead. Let's run. Let's let's catch a couple right quick. And and I've I've always done pretty well, but in the last few years I've I've pretty much wound that up. I don't run the boys no more. So yeah. so we're we're in the second round, the second and third round of the playoffs this year, and we were losing. There was only a couple minutes left, and they were just trying to run the clock out. The other team was, I think it was uh, Mainland, and so the quarterback squirts up there, you know, right outside the you know tackle, and he mm-hmm. tries to turn up field, and our, and our inside linebacker just popped him. And the ball popped out, and the defense. Sure. Def- and this is like on the about the forty-five yard line, and the defense man it bounced right into his hands, and he takes off down the field. And we're only down by like four, so this was going to sure. put us ahead. And John Woodley, the defensive coordinator, on the film, I watched it. <laughs> that Joker, when he, when when Adion grabbed that ball and started running it in for a touchdown. John took off down the field from the fifty-yard line, <laughs> and he's probably about two eighty. You know, he's a big boy. And he's taking off down the sideline, and I looked at the time, and he ran thirty yards in four seconds. <laughs> I ain't kidding. You. And so at the, uh, I give away a bracelet to the football players that you know who who chased the line, the Benaya bracelet, mm-hmm. who chased the line. And uh, in that game, I said I got to give this one to Coach Woodley. I said Coach Woodley run a four <laughs> flat thirty. <laughs> if he's anything like us, the next morning he was paying for it. He told me he yeah. said he said I was so sore. <laughs> I want to tell you something, man. It's so much fun. I love being a part of what I'm doing, man. And I just want to tell you, man, um, I wish you guys at Brantford all the best, man. I hope you guys continue to develop and grow. And um, thank you for being uh, thank you for being a coach because they say that coaches will influence more people in, 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 in one year than most people will in a lifetime. And I appreciate the fact that you go out there, you do it with honor, you do it with integrity, you do it with care and FCA has this program called Three Dimensional Coaching, and the first dimension is training the athlete physically. The second is emotional, and the third is spiritual. And the thing that I think is so important, we it's 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 great to be great in that first dimension, but to me, what our kids need in today's world is that second and third dimension. Absolutely. And to me, um, you are a specialist at that second one. And just attaching yourself to these kids and, and letting them know that you love them and that you care about them, which well, introduces them to the third dimension. Sure, you know, because sure. once they see that, they want to they want to taste that that third exactly dimension. Exactly right. <clears throat> so I want to tell you, thank you, man, publicly. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what Co- Coach Clark is doing. Thank you for what y'all staff is doing. Thank you for influencing your young men. And we're going to see the effects of what you guys are doing 
as time continues to move on in Bradford. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. We, we've we've making um, we've made a lot of progress over the last few years, and um, I, I expect it to continue. I, I really do. Tim Clark works hard. He works really, really hard at what he does. Um, he's got a really good coaching staff surrounding him. Uh, he's got everything he needs. So really, he uh, he's uh, he, he's like I said, man. He works hard at what he does. He loves to win. I mean, who doesn't? But uh, he he works really hard. Spends a lot of time at it. Well, winning is is uh is to me winning is teaching these guys how to be great men. Sure, sure. And, and winning on the field teaches them that too. It's a lot more fun when you're winning on the field. And so, uh, man, I just t- thank you, man, for what you're doing. Uh, I'll be praying for you and Cade as y'all continue to move down this road and this path. And um, and I'll be praying for Coach Clark. And I'm here for you guys, whatever you need. But if, if you ever get put in jail. And, nah. you, and you need a bail bondsman. <laughs> Jerry Coker's your man. <laughs> Let's hope we don't go there, right? <laughs> Let's hope not. I tell you, man, uh, I hope I don't ever have to call you. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to be in jail. But if, if you ever need anything, Jerry Coker is a great guy, man. So if you guys ever uh, – if you ever if you ever need anybody, man, and you want to learn about hunting or anything like that, uh, just let me know. I'll get you in touch with him. He's, he's uh, probably the most proficient hunter that I've ever personally been around in my life. And I uh, just want to tell you I love you, brother. And I appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. I hope you had a great time. Same here, Skipper. I appreciate you inviting me, man. It's been an honor and pleasure to be able to come. Appreciate you, brother. We'll see you later. All right. Thank you for listening to A Voice in the Wilderness podcast with Skipper Hare. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. You can also learn more about FCA Outdoors by going to fcaod.org. Check out the Woods and Water magazine, which comes out once a month. Skipper writes an exciting article for FCA Outdoors. You can pick them up in most convenience stores in the Southeast region. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel Hair Days Uncut to follow all the podcasts from Skipper and his friends.